Electronics. So this is the interview preparation series of EC Electronics. And today we are going to start a new series for the preparation of Java. So Java is a programming language and a lot of people was asking me to do series of uh, interview preparation videos for Java. So today we are going to start a series which is called quick recap of Java. So we'll be doing various videos uh, and uh, on every videos we'll be doing interview questions of Java. So uh, in this video which is the part one we are going to see the very basic questions from Java programming language. So if you don't know anything about Java's programming language also you can start watching this series. Okay. So this is mainly focusing for the interview preparation of uh, core companies and MNCs. Okay, so let us start the session. The first question I've included uh, in this video is what is Java? So you cannot really uh, face this type of questions uh, in interviews, but this is a very, because this is a very simple question. But since this is the introduction of the starting video, I've included this question. Okay, so the first question is what is Java? So Java is a programming language. Now, if you take the programming languages, all languages, if you take and if you classify them, we can have three categories or three classifications of programming languages. So we can classify the languages as three categories. First one is machine language. Second one is assembly language. And third one is high level programming languages. So the first category is machine language. Second one assembly language. Third one is high level programming languages. Okay. So the machine language if you examine this language it will be in the forms of uh, 1, 0, 1, 0 language. It will be 1s and zeros. Okay. So that is the first category which is the machine language. Second one is assembly language. I'm sure that all of you have done uh, assembly language coding uh, in your 8051 uh, microcontroller or 8085 labs. So the hex programming that we do in these labs are assembly language programming. Means here we are uh, writing the code more specific to the hardware. We are going to include the details of ports and we are going to write the coding more specific to the hardware. So that type of coding is called assembly language coding. And the third one, which is the higher end uh, of the coding, which is called high level programming languages. This language, which is called high level programming languages, they are more human understandable. Okay. If you examine these codes, humans can understand what uh, have been written in this codes. Okay. So this high level language is more human understandable and the machine uh, language is more machine understandable. Okay. Uh, if you see this machine uh, language programming, humans cannot really understand what is the coding. Okay, So this is more machine uh, understandable and high level language is more human understandable. Now talking about Java, Java is actually a high level programming language. Okay, Now if you uh, examine this high level languages, again there are sub classifications. There are object oriented programming languages are there, procedure languages are there. There are again various classifications, sub classifications are there. Java is coming under the category of object oriented programming languages. Okay, so Java is a OOPS language which is called an uh, object oriented programming language. Okay, so Java is a object oriented programming language. Now why it is called object oriented programming language because if you examine a Java code there we are mainly focusing on handling of objects, creating of objects, modifying all these things we are doing. So we are mainly handling objects in Java. Okay. So Java is a high level language and it is an object oriented programming language. That will be the answer of the first question. The second question is what are the features of Java? So this is actually a most commonly asked type of question. Okay, The features of Java. First one is object oriented. We have just now discussed that Java is an object oriented programming language. So again that is the first property of Java. We are mainly handling uh, on ob that is handling objects and we are focusing on objects. Second one is platform independent. Okay, Platform means uh, the operating systems. 
you uh, can write java once and you can perfectly run java on any platform that is the biggest advantage of going for java java is platform independent the code can be perfectly uh, run on any platforms for example if you are using, using windows or mac os or linux any operating system it be or any platform it be you can run the java code perfectly on any platforms and we use a specific term to represent this property which is called bora bora means write once and run anywhere so when you are answering this question if you are using these terms or keywords then it will be very good okay so bora is write once and run anywhere so uh, this property is indicating that you can use perfect the java perfectly with any platform you just read, uh, need to write the code once you don't have to uh, make any modifications or you don't have to rewrite the code for changing the platforms so it is platform independent third one it is simple code if you are uh, seeing the java code if you don't know anything about java also uh, simple codes you can understand okay it is simple and also it is easy to understand and easy to handle and also they are having other features are also there high performance uh, and all these things are the various properties of java the first two one are the first two properties are the important properties first one it is object oriented second one it is platform independent okay so these are the properties of java the third question is what is a java compiler okay now we are going to discuss about java compiler what is a java compiler what is the name of java compiler and what is the use of a java compiler okay so uh, just now we have discussed that java is a high level programming language and while discussing that i have explained uh, that the high level programming languages are human understandable languages right so in order to make it to a form which is machine understandable we are using a tool which is called a compiler okay so this java is a high level language high level language in order to make it machine understandable form in order to convert this high level language to a machine understandable form means ones and zeros you are using a tool which is called a compiler okay so this is the use of the tool which is called compiler or compiling means you are going to convert uh, the code to a machine language now in the case of a java there is in the case of java we are using the compiler called jit which is called just in time compiler okay so this is the name of java compiler now this jit is a compiler that we use for java now while discussing the properties of java we have uh, explained that the second property which is called platform independent means you are going to write the java code once and you are going to run the code on multiple platforms without any problem right and this property is possible with the help of the java compiler or just in time compiler so if you are if you are going to write the code and if the system is having a just in time compiler means it will convert it, uh, the uh, java which is a high level language to a machine understandable form and it can run on any platform okay so the second property which is the platform independence is uh, possible with the help of a compiler which is called the java compiler okay so that is the uh, question answer which is what is a java compiler so the next question is what are the ides that we use for java okay so uh, we are going to discuss about ides now what is id id means integrated development environment okay so this uh, integrated development environment it is actually a bundle of various tools now let us talk about uh, the program writing okay so in order to uh, write a program and then run it what all things we have to do first we have to write the code then we have to uh, debug the code means we have to look for errors then we have to compile the code and then we have to run the code right so this is the basic steps that we do while we are writing uh, not just java any other uh, language also okay so here we are uh, using a id which is called integrated development environment means this integrated development environment will be having all the tools which are used for writing uh, for debugging for compiling all these things okay so it will be having what all tools editor will be there then debugger will be there then compiler all these tools will be there and together all these tools if uh, it is forming a bundle means it is called a 
ID. ID is actually a software which uh, we install to our computer. And this ID will be having all the tools for writing, for editing, for uh, for error correction, for compiling. All these tools will be present. Okay. So uh, that is the uh, meaning of an ID, which is called Integrated Development Environment. Okay. So it will be having all the necessary tools for uh, writing the code, uh, debugging and everything. Okay. Now the examples of Java IDs are Eclipse, NetBeans, Spring STS. These are the examples of Java IDs. Okay. And also, uh, if you uh, want to use a notepad, it is also possible. It is not an ID, but it is a, uh, again, you can make use of notepad also. So, in order to write simple Java codes, we can make use of notepad also, okay. But the IDs of uh, Java, these are some examples, e Eclipse, NetBeans and Spring STS, okay. So, if the interviewer is asking you what is an ID, first you should be answering that. It is a bundle or it is a software which is having all the tools which is used for uh, writing the code, debugging all these steps, okay. So that is an ID and these are the examples of Java IDs. Okay. What is a class? Okay. So slowly we are uh, moving towards the concepts of uh, Java. So if you examine a Java program, the Java program is actually a group of, if you examine a simple Java program, it will be a group of various classes. Okay. So these classes together forms a Java program. And the, the class is the basic framework of any Java code. Okay. And if you see the structure of a class, it will look like this. I have not included the library files or header files or anything. This is the simple format of a class. And it will be like this. Public class. The keyword class is indicating that it represents a class. Then there will be a name for a class which is, I have used a name addition. You can use a different name also. Okay. So this is the class name. Then int a, b. These are some variables I have declared for this class. Then Public void add. You can see that this add is a method. It is actually a function or a method. In uh, Java, we say it's methods. Then, in c equal to a plus b, return. Then, brackets close. Okay. So, this is a simple class form. Just like this class, we can form multiple classes. Okay. Now, uh, what all things a class is actually having is, a class is having a name and also class is having variables and methods. So, what all things the class is having? The class is having a class name is there. Then variables are present. Variables can be present and also methods can be present. Okay. So, this is one method I have declared for this class. So, a class is having a class name, variables and methods. Okay. Uh, methods means it is just like functions but uh, in Java we say as methods. Okay. So, this is a simple framework which is a class and this is the this class is the basic framework of any Java code. So, if you examine a Java code, it will be having numerous classes. Okay. So, that is the importance of a class. Next question is, what is an object? So, towards the beginning of this video, we have discussed that Java is an object-oriented programming language. Right? It is an OOPS language. So, in this, uh, in Java, we are mainly uh, handling objects. Okay. So, uh, what is actually an object? Object means it is the basic instance of a class. So, if you examine a class, you can uh, form multiple objects for a class. So, if you are not able to understand uh, it in the programmatic way, let us discuss about uh, the object uh, with a, an example. Okay. So, uh, let us consider that uh, you are having a class that is your classroom. And in your classroom, there are various students, right? So, uh, we know that for every student, there is a student name and also there is roll numbers, okay. So, you can think your classroom as a class and every student as various objects of the class. And every object is having the parameters which are present for a class also. So, uh, for a class, there is a parameter which is called student name. So, every student is having their own student names and also roll number. Every student is having their own roll numbers, right? So, just like that, in Java also, for every class, you can create multiple objects, just like your class, multiple students or stu uh, multiple persons are present in the class, right? Just like that, for uh, Java, for a class, you can create multiple objects and every object will be having all the parameters which are present for the class also, okay. So, the if you create an object for a class, that object will be having variables, 
methods all those parameters which are present for the class also okay so that is the importance of an object and you can say that an object is a basic instance of a class this is a term we generally use for defining an object an object is a basic instance of a class okay now let us see how can you create an object for a class very simple syntax it is having in the upcoming videos we'll be doing more uh, complex examples and quotes and all here we are going to see only the basic uh, syntax which is used for creating a object for a class okay so this is a syntax class name object name equal to new class name this is the syntax we follow in order to create an object for a particular class okay so that's all about object and uh, for every class we can create multiple objects and you know that a java program is having multiple classes so various objects can be created and we handle these objects okay so that is actually uh, the main thing we do in java coding so that is why it is called a object oriented programming language so i am i am thinking that you are uh, now clear with the idea of object okay so in this video we have actually discussed about very basic concepts only we have discussed what is java we have discussed what are the various categories of language and, and uh, in which category the uh, java is coming also we have discussed about the compiler what is a java compiler also the ides and we have discussed the concepts of class and objects okay so uh, that's all for this video we'll be doing this videos as series in the next part we'll be discussing about the object oriented programming language concepts or oops concepts we'll be discussing okay so if you are interested in watching this uh, this series please do stay tuned to the channel we'll be uploading videos continuously okay so that's all about this video i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up also share the video with your friends and if you are more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching